ahead and start announcing these folks. Would Jenny Garth please join us? And Gabrielle Carteris. And Shannon Doherty. And Tori Spelling. And we have Jason Priestley. Brian Austin Green. And Ian Ziering. We have the seats in the back too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no. How is everyone? I mean, this is a giant room. You've got the cameras going. I mean, that stage. is a lot of phones. Uh, <laughs> what does it mean to all of you to kind of see this outpouring of love? It's not working. Thank you. It's just for love. Can you hear us? <laughs> amazing. How amazing to see you all here. Thank you so much. How about you, Brian? I know you were not at the one in March with this no, gathering. No. What What does this mean to you? Oh, this is amazing. The, the turnout is amazing. I was I was looking forward to um, stopping by the last one of the panel, but there were no other flights. You know. <laughs> It's hard to get to. So uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to meet everyone. This has been an amazing experience. Tori, could you have imagined in 1990 that this is what 2023 would look like? What? With uh, cameras and. <laughs> Both that and just like all these people coming to see you guys so many years later. We love you guys so much. We Thank love you. We love you. So I want to go into the Wayback Machine and hear about the first splurge after you, this show had launched. It was doing well. What? What did you? What was the gift you bought yourself? Oh, Ian is making a face, and he definitely has an answer. Okay, so. You know, I. Jeez. Oh, I'm terrified for this. Wait, I, I drove out to California from Jersey in an Acura Integra, a little four door car. And um, my first splurge was when I drove through a, a car wash. This is year two. Drove through a car wash and the windshield broke off. The windshield wiper broke off. So I was like, crap. And they didn't want to fix it. And I was like, I drove over to the to the Acura dealership and I'm sitting there and there's this Acura legend spinning on a turntable. I'm all, well, I'm all pissed off about my wiper blade and I'm looking at this thing rotating in front of me. I, I just traded in the car. I was like, how much is that? Because I don't, I, you know, we, that was my first splurge. And then he drove it to set the next day and he stood underneath it and he rotated. Oh. And look how good this is. Don't you want super, one? He's a super strong guy. Super strong. That was my first one. <laughs> How about you, Jenny? Oh, splurge. Oof. Um, I remember I bought my dad a pickup truck. That was yeah. like oh, very exciting moment for me. Dad, able to do that. What was his reaction? Um, he was very happy with that. I mean, <laughs> I would be too. Um, how about you, Jason? Was there was there something you treated yourself to? Uh, mine's super boring. Uh, I bought a house. You know, it's super pragmatic, very sensible. Family of realtors drilled it into my head my whole life. Make some money, first thing you gotta do is buy a house. And that's what I did. Super boring. Crazy. Shannon, how about you? Oh, um, I paid off some of my dad's hospital bills. I want to hear what you splurged on. That's a beautiful thing. That's a lot of honor there. That no, was a like, splurge. When you can't afford, like we were eating rice and beans for the majority of my life. So when you can actually like afford to to start paying for something like that, so that your dad's not getting phone calls every single day, that's making him panic. That's a splurge. <laughs> Right 
Brian, was there a moment in the process of this, especially in the beginning, where you, you realized you made it? And I say that with air quotes that I can't use with while I'm using two hands. Yeah, so um, we did a college grad night at Disney. Yeah. And um, uh, another bad creation was there. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, not to date this or anything. <laughs> But uh, Wilson Phillips were really big at the time. Yeah. Like yesterday. Everybody still listens to Wilson Phillips, right? Um, so uh, it was a stage that that, um, that we were on. It was called the Tomorrowland Terrace. And it started underground. And it was like an elevator, so it would come up. And uh, right before us, I think it was Wilson Phillips that went on to perform. And, I remember hearing everybody screaming in the crowd, and I thought, oh, they must be doing another song. And our show had just started. That was, was me screaming for you. <laughs> so Tori was up above in the crowd. I didn't know that, but you did a great and job. I was there that night? So supportive. That, that um, brawl that got thrown in your face. You're right, totally. Totally. <laughs> Fit me perfectly. Literally. Yeah. So, um, so we got on the stage. They came down first. We got on the stage and they were preparing for us to come up. And um, we all thought it would be funny to sort of hide. Uh, so when the stage came up, there was nobody on the stage. <laughs> Remember you? Yeah, sir. Yeah, come on, one of you. Yeah. Time in. You were yeah. there. So, so the stage came up and then you weren't there. You were, you were buying houses. It was, it was a whole I think you were there. I think Jay was the only one that wasn't there because he was like a real estate mogul by that point. None of us don't remember this. Great story, Brian. Again, Great story. I remember this. You and Tori were there. Correct. None of us were. Brian, what sucks is it's way too late to quit. No, Jen was there. Brian, Brian, is, Brian is the youngest of all of us, so uh, maybe we should trust his memory on this. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Tori, was there a moment for you that was like, uh, oh gosh, I, I like, I've really made it. I have an acting career. This is this is a real thing for me. <laughs> it was. I remember the moment being at the mall and like going up the es sorry, going down the escalator, and people were like, Donna, Donna. I'm like, that's funny. That's. that's a character. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so, next. Someone was saying a name and. Yeah, yeah I'm going to give you these papers. <laughs> yeah, it's been a nice ride. <laughs> <laughs> Our sag rep, everybody. Someone, you're welcome. No, you're, you're good. You're good. Someone said a name that I seemed to respond to, but I didn't think they were talking about me. And it was, and I realized it was people who knew who I was. Sorry, you guys, it's a tough position to not be able to talk about it. But I know that everyone supports you, and that, like you all get it that like there's going to be a little bobbing and weaving happening in this family. Uh, but it's going to be fun. It's fun so far. I'm digging it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking of balls, and I know I, <laughs> the pressure is real. Um, speaking of malls, I mean back then. That was a whole thing, these mall appearances, because there wasn't social media, there wasn't the internet, and all of these ways that people had access to see you and scream for you. Um, Gabrielle, what do you remember about some of those mall experiences? I think every time it was shock. I, 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 don't, I don't think I ever got used to it, right? So I would be like, being with my husband or friend or going out and suddenly, <gasps> And, and not just not realizing it. It was just, I, and I think part of it is that, you know, during the 90s, 
in the success of shows that um, not that far. Um, I think that it it was just it, it, we were working. You know, a lot of us were fortunate. We were working a lot at the time, so I, I felt like there was a disconnect, like what was going out in the world and what was going on in our world. And so then sometimes going like into public or into the malls was like the two worlds colliding. And it was just like, wow. And I always uh, loved being with my friends who um, were sharing the journey together because it was a little How about you, Jason? What was that mall experience like? There was a, <clears throat> there was a moment, I think it was in the second, maybe the third season of the show, Jenny and I, Curious to hear if you remember this. We, we went to Detroit. We, yeah, Detroit Rock City in the house. So we went to Detroit to present a check from the Chrysler Motor Corporation to the United Way, I do believe. And we, yeah, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe you don't remember this. This was awesome. So, I'm so glad you're talking we, about right. it. <laughs> so, I did. So we, so we went there and the, and the presentation was taking place in Joe Louis Arena. And there were 18,000 screaming fans in this arena. And when the curtain opened and Jenny and I walked out on the stage, the, the, the screams and the, the roar of the crowd was deafening. It was unbelievable. And the flash bulbs and all of it. And, and that was the first time that I sort of realized that that our, that our show was making a huge impact outside of, outside of, you know, what we actually understood. I was there. <laughs> she was there. So it definitely happened. <laughs> Anyone from Disneyland? Can you confirm that Jenny was there? Wait, was Jenny there? She was there. Was I there? You had bags. Wait, so who was there? Jenny and Jason. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jenny doesn't remember. That is, I have no recollection of what you're talking about. You would think I would remember a giant check? Yeah. I don't remember it. It wasn't to you, though. <laughs> That's much easier to remember. Shannon, what were your thoughts the first time you saw a doll of you or a character you played? Uh, that does not look like me. <laughs> I was really the very first thought was that it looks like every other doll. Am I, I can I even say yeah. B A R B I O doll. It's not the movie. Okay, but it's also it's a uh, doll. You're talking about the doll. No, but she's talking about the doll. We're not talking like about the doll. Like charades. We're talking about the doll. Talking about the doll, not the movie. Okay, thank you. Let's check. Vice President, I have to check. I'm not that. Um, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it just didn't look like me. And we all looked the same. And we had like just different color hair. And, and by the way, my outfit was hideous. I was like, what? Like, when did I ever wear like weird shorts with like hiking boots? I mean, it was just the weirdest. Because so you know, sundresses and Doc Martens for like ten years, years for you. I wore, it was awful. So yeah, I was a little, I was a little freaked out by it. To be I honest. loved that doll. I finally <laughs> had a perfect note. <laughs> Jenny, what did you think of your doll? I thought the same thing for Shannon. Like, they all kind of just look like run-of-the-mill dolls. Like, they just put our clothes on and the sign on the box and called it our dolls. But it was definitely cool uh, to see. And I still have mine in my box somewhere. You do? My dog ripped all the mine up. <laughs> Somebody just gave me, like, 
three different ones from different shows and I took them home and I had them in the laundry room sitting on the floor because I didn't really know what to do with them because they creeped me out personally. <laughs> and, um, and my German Shepherd handled it for me. She literally <laughs> destroyed them. I found my head. I hope that came with you guys. There was a leg like way over here and then I think she pooped out my arm. <laughs> And then the person who gave you that towel's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the towel. <laughs> Can she have another? <laughs> <laughs> Made of metal. <laughs> Brian, what's the craziest piece of merch from something you've done that you've seen? That I've seen? That I've seen. Sorry, yes. I, was just, yes, I've seen. I was just talking to you and I was like, oh, there's people here. Just probably use a microphone. Um, I, God, they made everything. I, I saw uh, your action figure. <laughs> so that's what he sells it as because he's like, I can't believe I had a doll. So he's like, it was an action figure, but it doesn't move like it's, you know. And it's wearing heels. I was like, that's not an action figure. <laughs> it's only missing a kind of right. right, bro. It's right there. Okay. Enjoy it. Um, uh, it's missing a lot. Right. No, no, at all. Um, the craziest one, I mean, we had all sorts of merch. We had, I, I saw Walkmans, and I've seen, I, I remember I, uh, Darren Martin, um, for anybody that knows him, 9021 Bro. Who was supposed to be here? He's not. Uh, Darren, we miss you. Love you. He's like our. Um, uh, he showed me, he, he found some, uh, it was like a Hot Wheels car that was supposed to be yours, but it wasn't the right car. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you saw that too, right? And I'm sure somebody else saw that, so verify my story, please. <laughs> it was the wrong I'm like, I'm like for one right now. Right? It was the wrong 67 yellow Mustang? It wasn't even a yellow Mustang. It wasn't even a Mustang. No, it was like, it was like a... A red, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pontiac? Yeah. The what? A red Pontiac. Yeah, it was like a yeah, wagon red with, like, wood handling on the... It was very, like, Partridge Family-ish. <laughs> the tall wheels. So that was a priest. What about the sheets? The what? Oh. You guys all, like, had sheets. I still wear... I have the sheets on my bed. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, two thread count. They're super... <laughs> By the way, he's talking about Jason. He is Jason Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Not his and our thread bear. I've been with right. his house. With, with his action figures all over the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I have different like clothing to change. As you should. I am with right. As you should. <laughs> What is the craziest thing you've been asked to sign? And I'm gonna say body parts notwithstanding. Look, he's all sad about it. You know, people have come up to me and asked me to sign lots of different things. Certainly, a few body parts. What has been interesting is to see, like, uh, can you sign my arm? And then they'll turn it into a tattoo, which is uh... now I saw a Joe and their soul. Tattoo. So hey. we're good with that. Just have a whole. Bunch of minions that had my name on their tattoo. Right? <laughs> Snap my hand and they quack like a duck wherever I am in the world. Have any of you ever seen, or any of you have, uh, like a collect them all, like the tattoo signatures of all of yours? I've Anybody seen, out there have that? Somebody? Somebody? Yeah. Anybody I've out there? Hold on. Are you willing to say that? No. But not all of uh, different show that I was on afterwards, I've seen people with all of our faces on their body. And what's really interesting is that, like, then they can make my mouth move and stuff. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can, like, yeah, they, like, roll their back. Is it over their belly button? Oh, what's the <laughs> like, I'm, like, moving and they're just like, no, so only you do that. <laughs> but I have seen uh, some people with full of shows. Yeah. It's wild. Makes me uncomfortable. Does it? It makes me a little uncomfortable too. There's too many of us to put on somebody's body. <laughs> um, a lot of these people did, or may still do, no judgment, 
uh, have posters of you all on their walls. Um, Tori, is there someone that you had on your walls? Be it uh, another actor, or musician, or sports hero? Yeah, but he's sitting behind me. <laughs> Show. Yes. Uh, there was another show that Jason was on. I was a big fan, and I <laughs> <laughs> Jason, did you know that? No, I never told him that part. Yeah, <laughs> this is new information. <laughs> I had that same poster on my wall. Right next to the sheets. That's not weird at all, right? So Jason, who was two thread count sheets. We have a therapist yeah. coming for Brian, right? It's a big moment for me. Actually, it wasn't a poster. It was like out of a back. Yeah, it was like the center pole. I typed for me, like I ripped it out, put it up, and then it was like, yeah. You carefully removed the staple so that it wasn't. Yeah. No, like tape on the back, like you fold it just so you can take it off. Jason, did you have any like? Celebrity people on your wall growing you know up. What? I'm old enough. There's probably not that many people in the room old enough to remember this. But in the '70s, when I grew up, every boy had a Farrah Fawcett poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. That's the only one I had. How about you, Shannon? Were you? Did you have any fandoms? I, I want to hear. Ryan, did you already answer this? Not yet. I. Frankenstein. <laughs> I had like a nine foot Frankenstein in my room. I had to like save box tops from cereal. And it was Frankenstein. That's... I did not know, but I just knew that I had something very weird. <laughs> I had that in, there used to be these things called wacky packs. Like you buy like baseball cards and these stickers and they would spoof all different kinds of, and on my door in my room, a million wacky bags. When you open the door, there's Frankenstein. <laughs> and he glowed in the dark. <laughs> I don't remember what the cereal was, but after collecting thousands of dollars of cereal box tops, I mailed away and I got Frankenstein. That is fantastic. It was all, it I hope it was like blueberry years. or something. How long did your sea monkeys stay alive? I had sea monkeys! How do you know I had sea monkeys? <laughs> so funny, sea monkeys. Box tops. Brine shrimp, so funny. Sea monkeys. No, but how long did they stay alive, your sea monkeys? They don't <laughs> stay alive too long. <laughs> I don't know. Did you do tadpoles too? I actually, you know, before I got 90210, between college and when I booked that, I was working in an aquarium. Because I thought, well, if the acting doesn't work out, maybe I'll learn how to import tropical fish or anything. It was a passion of mine. So, Illegally. sea monkeys don't live very long. You, I know that. I'm you authority. Used, you used to have a saltwater tank. I did. I, and then, I loved uh, it. Yeah, and then you tried giving it to me. Well, then I moved. It up the, right. Yeah. That was my second splurge. I moved into the house. <laughs> I thought the tropical fish tank was your second splurge. Right. I brought that with me from Jersey. What a stupid thing I'm bringing a fish tank. And it was a big fish tank too. It was it was like a hundred plus gallon oh, fish tank. Some Cadillac fish tanks. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. it was a lot of money the first time you bought it. So it you were like trying to be yeah. McDonald's. Jenny, did you have any any stars on your walls? Uh yeah, I had um Michael Jackson and Madonna. I had like lace and all the things that Madonna wore tacked up all over my room. Leaf Gary. Really into Madonna. Leaf Garrett, was he on your wall? No. Michael Jackson and Madonna. Oh wait, and Mary Lou Retton. I don't know why. Because she was awesome. I don't want to be missed it. Apparently I really liked her. Okay, so speaking of style, I want to play a little game about 90s style. Um, so you can raise your hand or chime in with your thoughts, whatever. Um, should we bring them back is the question. Um, or they can stay in the 90s, please. Uh, 
and don't don't feel like you have to say you can bring them back just because I'm wearing this first one. Uh, <laughs> chokers. Love chokers. Wait, you know everything from the '90s is currently. I know it really <laughs> is coming back, but some things should stay in the '90s. Um, David Silver wardrobe should stay in the '90s. <laughs> <laughs> that was what specifically from that character's wardrobe? All Everything. Of it. We, we, like, we, we, they would pick the most ridiculous uh, patterns and things and make pants out of them or shirts. I had uh, pants that were uh, lifesaver pants. And then, and then I had the shirt, and you used to call it the um, an awning. An awning, it awning like, right. It was kind of striped, it was gorgeous. Truth be told, we had a choice of what we wanted to wear. They would like create a palette, but we could say, yeah, I wear that. Can we there. cut Ian Zeering's right. microphone, please? <laughs> yes. So, I don't feel bad. I used to walk around with my shirt buttoned to here. I didn't freaking work. Dude, my you had those little shorts? I clearly did not have a mirror in my dressing room. Um, Nobody was my friend, so you might want to fix that shit because I don't fly. Can I just say my favorite? wearing them. My favorite merchandise ever, we had the trading cards. And, <laughs> and there was one of mine, we were shooting at the oh beach, God, no. and he was, he was reaching down in the water, and he looked up and he was like, ooh, that's cold, and they took a picture. <laughs> it's the greatest trading card ever, right? I'm still pissed. <laughs> and Jason would take it to the wall, and, and he... The choo-choo-choo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-wo
Keep them. We're keeping them all. We're keeping it all. Collect them all. Um, slip dress with a t-shirt underneath. Yes. 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 Bleach tips on the guys. Nope. Bleach tips? On your hair. You mean like highlights? Sure. Is that what we call no. them bleach tips? No. What are we talking bleach it tips? tips? It's like a frost. It's not the whole highlight. Oh, no. We go all the way now. It's under this half ass. The 15 inch dial, I hope They not. call it now highlights. <laughs> uh, Jason, you've been doing a bunch of directing. What do you love about kind of that side of the industry? Uh, uh, what do I, I you know, I, I, you know, be, being a director was something that I started in the third season of, oh my, I can't even say that, can I? Um, of an iconic show. Of, of an iconic show from the 90s. <laughs> I think, I think, I think that I did that I was supposed to do. Um, and, uh, and anyway, the, these guys were all super supportive of me when I, when I decided to make that move and, and start working as a director. And, and so I, you know, I'm very thankful to all of these guys, how supportive they were and how they were instrumental in the, in the career I have behind the camera today. I thought to work with Jason was really fun because Jason has a sense of humor and everything like just finds a little bit of a moment to capture. And then it could be a really, it could be an intense scene or whatever. Just that moment gives like, and a levity, kind of a freedom, and then everybody can feel what they're going to feel, and they can have fun, and it's it's great, really wonderful. Thanks, Shannon. What was it like to be directed by him? Did you direct me? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it was great. Listen, Jay and I had an awesome, interesting uh, relationship. We were actually just talking today about there's a photo like floating around with the two of us that is the most inappropriate thing I've ever seen for a brother and sister. It is like, he's like behind me, has hugs, and we're all like sexy, and I'm like, oh no, this is wrong. Why is this out there? Like, this is crazy. It was Rolling Stone magazine? <laughs> no, no, it was like a, it was a promo shot for this show. It was an iconic show. And, um, and it was just inappropriate. I mean, it was really inappropriate. Um, but we were always like sort of inappropriate, like, inappropriate brother sister. So, <laughs> so it was it was fantastic. Next question, please. <laughs> well, I'm gonna stay on this kinship for a second because you posted. No, no, wait, this is sweet. This is I sweet. Have to go. Um, <laughs> You posted on Instagram a couple days ago looking at wines, and apparently Jason is a big wine connoisseur because you've got a wine line that started this year, right? I do. Uh, yeah, I've got well, I've got a couple of wine projects that I'm involved in, but um, the biggest the biggest one that's available here in America is the Oak and Priest Wine Company. We make uh, we make two wines up in Napa Valley, and one wine down in Paso Robles. Um, it's very, very limited qualities, uh, very limited quantities. Sorry, super, super high quality. Very limited quantities. Go <laughs> no, buy it right it's, away. It's really good wine. You know, it's super hard to find because we don't make very much of it. But if anyone's interested, they can just go to opiumpriestwinecompany.com and um, check it out. If you look underneath your chairs. <laughs> um, I know you all like Jason, have various different things going on outside of acting. So I want to give you each a chance to kind of talk about all the things you're working on. Um, Jenny, I am kind of loving the, the swag merch that's at your merch booth. It's kind of amazing. Uh, but tell everyone kind of about that and, and anything else you're working on. Yeah, um, that sort of spawned from Kelly's kind of famous line, I choose me, when she was faced with a decision whether to pick Brandon or Dylan, and she decided to choose herself. And um, our good friend Jessica Klein wrote that, and I, it always just stuck with me. And it strikes a chord on such a deeper level for me because I have three girls that I've been raising and you know teaching them and how to love themselves and um, respect themselves has been the most important thing for me. So I just sort of feel like that line actually is very significant to young women. 
So yeah. that's what the merch came from. Thanks. Um, and and Tori, you've got a bunch of stuff working on as well, like your QVC line. And you want to tell us about it? Yes. Ken and I have a, a QVC line. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> what do you mean? You know what? Wow. You can hear me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we have, uh, it's called BFF Collection on QVC. We'll be live September 20th with our new culinary collection. So check it out. And I, and I know you've got like a ton of businesses, but what do these people need to know about first and foremost? Uh, you know, I got involved in a, a network, a direct sales company many years ago. Uh, it's health and beauty, glam stuff. And in the 14 years that I've been involved, I've, been in, I've built an international network of executives. I've got a couple thousand people that I've helped train and mentor and teach them how to, uh, to start their own business. If anyone's interested in working in the health and beauty industry, Find me at Ian Zeering, DM me, you want to know more about this free business opportunity. And it's something, you know, people tell me I look young for my age, well, I use the products and they work. So, look at this. That's good, right? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. And anyway, yeah, there's a lot of irons. I think life's really too short to just do one thing. I've got some other things that are happening too. I'm trying to develop some projects for the, uh, for the entertainment. Uh, industry is that how I is that good? Okay, you know, <laughs> trying to try to do that. Um, got a lot of fair contract. My kids keep me motivated. They're uh, my why for everything, and I just keep it, you know, nose to the grindstone. Great. Uh, and Brian, you've got a new show that we can talk about coming out with special forces. <laughs> oh, we have to leave now. Yes, yes, Cynthia, it'll be coming out. You just can't talk about it yet. And I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so good. <laughs> Gabrielle, will talk about it for me. <laughs> Gabrielle, what do you want to make sure this audience really understands about what's going on with SAG after a union strike? If for anyone who doesn't know, Gabrielle was is the former president of SAG after. <laughs> First of all, I'm not anymore, so everybody comes to me as if it's me doing it. But I'll, I will say this. Um, it's really incredible to be here with you guys. And the union right now, uh, though I'm not the president, I am a member, we're all members of it. And you're here, seeing everybody here as a member. And the union has actually made it possible for us to be here, um, wanting to really acknowledge you. Um, we know how important you are. And they're acknowledging us by saying there are ways for us to make a living while we're even on a strike. And because 90s Con is actually honoring that, we're able to be here also. It's a way for us to make a part of our living. Um, so thank you so much. And I'll say it's a righteous fight right now. It's a lot about uh, artificial intelligence. Actually, a lot of you who are in businesses right now, your work might be threatened by artificial intelligence without any kind of um, laws to protect you. Our contracts are the only thing. So our fight is your fight. And, um, and I think that what we, what we resolve in this contract for us and what we do in laws will actually help you all as workers around this country. So thank you so much for being here and understanding. Everybody's making fun of me a little bit. I'm not the one who made the rules, but, um, but I will say I'm ready to follow the rules because you know what? In order for us to make change, we have to be willing to step forward and be strong, and you're helping us do that, so thank you. And last but undoubtedly not least, Shannon, I know I speak on behalf of this crew, on behalf of all of these people, how happy we are to see you here.
recently, and I do, it seems. Um, so thank you. I, um, what do I have coming up? Uh, obviously, you know, I have a fight for my life that I deal with every day. Um, I think I am really great. My other profession is getting engaged, married, and divorced. And I'm really not doing well. Um, and November 13th, I have a podcast coming out on iHeart. Let's be clear, uh, and it's uh, a live interactive memoir, so you get to hear everything that I've refused to say before. <laughs> I'm spilling the tea, people. Nice By the way, Brian also has a podcast called Oldish, and it is amazing. So make sure that you're listening to his podcast because it's great. And thank you for your love. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I didn't give you a chance to speak about all this. So, come on, tell them what it is. That was the plug you needed. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's actually with uh, myself and uh, my my girlfriend Sharna Burgess and, 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 and Tori's younger brother Randy, who's been a life coach for 15 years. Wow. Uh, we uh, it's two episodes a week, so we have one on Tuesday and on Thursday. Uh, Tuesday we sort of have a topic and, and a thing that we that we talk about and go into whether it's disappointment or co-parenting or we sort of have these things and then Thursday um, people can write in questions or they can call in live and we uh, we give advice we try and help people as much as it's we can. It's really 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 good advice. Wonderful. On that note, I'm going to wrap things up. We're going to stand at the front so you can get a great picture. Uh, Thank you all so much. This is, thank you. Here we go. If you guys wouldn't mind facing out first, we're gonna get one shot of all the cast together. All righty. Now, if you wouldn't mind turning around and facing me, we're gonna get add Brienne in back here. And we're gonna get you and the entire crowd behind you. All right, let's take one giant step this way, if we may. There we go, perfect. Look at that. All right, everybody, make some noise. Get your hands up in the air. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for your favorite 90s zip code. Let's hear one more time for our amazing moderator, Brienne, and all that she's done this weekend as well. Show them some love. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is our last panel of the convention. Thank you so much for joining us here.